In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the Akai MPK Mini MK3 Program Editor. Check it out! Hey, my name is Matthew. On this channel, I do setup videos, tutorials, and overviews like this one. And in this particular video, I'm going to do an overview of the MPK Mini Program Editor. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Let's get into this. So if you look at my screen here, you'll see the Akai MPK Mini 3 Program Editor. Now, this program editor is different than the MK2 editor. There are a few more options in this editor. The MPK Mini MK3 can store up to eight different programs. And what a program is on the MPK Mini is a set of MIDI parameters that can go to the MPK Mini. So with this device, you only have so many options, right? You only have so many pads so many knobs and so many keys. But with the program editor, you can actually edit your keyboard to affect different parameters, um, up to eight different programs. So if you look here, there's a program select button and each of these pads correlate with the program. So um, by default, there are eight programs already in there, but you can go ahead and change these how you want to. And that's what the program editor is for. So I'm gonna to try to give you an overview of everything, but if you do have a specific question, leave it in the comments. Maybe I or somebody in the community can answer it for you. So let's go ahead and get into this. So if you look at the top of the MPK Mini 3 editor, you can click file and you can actually do a few things from here. So you could send programs from here. You can get programs from your device in this area and you can actually open programs that are saved on your hard drive. The MPK3 comes preloaded with eight different programs and the programs are right here. So you don't have to worry about like erasing a program in here because you can always get that program back. So don't worry about it. You can send programs wherever you want to on here. And if you want to go back to what it was, you can actually go here and restore your program. So if I make a program on the computer and send it over to this pad, what's gonna happen is it's gonna override that particular program, but you can get it back with these here. Now keep in mind, you can actually save a program as well. So if you make a customized program with the editor, you can actually save that program and have it on here for backup, or if you wanna send it to somebody, you can do that right here as well. Now, whenever I click save, you can see what the uh, file extension is for the editor right there. So in case you are curious about that, that's what the file extension is. All right, so tools are actually useful. So if you click that, that's gonna give you your MIDI monitor. So I wanna put this right here. Now, what your MIDI monitor is gonna do is it's gonna give you MIDI information. So I have my MPK Mini connected to my computer and it's important to have this actually connected to your computer so you can actually send and receive your programs. So if you look, if I hit pad one, now notice in the MIDI monitor, you can see what note that pad is, you can see what channel it was transmitted on and you can see the value that I actually hit it. Now the pads are actually after touch sensitive. So check this out. So if I hit the pad, you can see all those different mini notes all the way down to zero. So the, all these different values came in as I hit the note really hard and then let off my finger a little bit. You can see the value went less and less because um, the harder you hit it, the higher that MIDI value is going to be. And you can see it says after touch. So the MIDI monitor is going to be helpful in this process if you do want to know what the parameters are that you are actually changing. So let's go ahead and look at the tools here. You can see we have auto populate. And what this is going to do is going to automatically apply certain parameters to your pad banks or to your knobs. And it basically does makes it really fast instead of doing everything one by one. But let's actually go over the interface here before we go any further into that. And if you look here, you get, get your um, user guide right here if you do want the user guide. So if you look at the graphical interface, it kind of lines up to what the actual controls are on the keyboard, but kind of doesn't at the same time. So if you look up here, you have your joystick, that's going to you know correlate with your joystick on your physical controller. And to the right of your joystick, you have pad bank A in red, and then pad bank B is in green. So on your actual physical controller, you have two pad banks to give you up to 16 pads per program. So by default, you're on pad bank A. And if you click that, it's going to turn green. That's going to give you pad bank B. So the values of these pads are going to be different if you're in bank A or B. Now, I do want to note it does say pad one here, pad two here, pad three here. 
pad four here. These pad numbers correlate with the physical pads on your MPK Mini. So you can see pad one, pad two, pad three, and pad four on your MPK. Now at the top here, you can actually rename your program whatever you want to keep you organized. And then over here, to the right of that, you have your different knobs. All right, so you could go ahead and click in there and type into there. If you actually click the knob, it doesn't do anything. It's just a graphic, but it kind of lets you know which knobs you're affecting. Now, if you look right here, you can see this is knob K1 all the way through K8. And if you look at your controller, knob K1 is up here on the top left, and then K8 is down here at the bottom. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And keep in mind your pads go the opposite direction. So they start down here at one and up here is eight. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Underneath here, you do have options for your keyboard. I'll cover this more in detail in a minute here. Underneath that, you have options for your arpeggiator. All right, and then over here, underneath your pads, you have options for your different MIDI channels. So your pads go out on a particular MIDI channel that you choose and your keyboard and your controls go out on a different MIDI channel. So you're gonna have two different MIDI channels that your MPK MIDI is gonna transmit. And you select that right here. And then you can turn your um, aftertouch on and off here. And now over here, this is your program area. So this is how you send and receive your programs from your MPK Mini. And if you're uh, messing with a program and you wanna kinda test it out, you could send it to the RAM here. And what that will do is it'll load up the settings that you're working on inside of your MPK Mini so you don't actually load it into a preset program and you could test it out that way. So now that we covered the overview, let's go ahead and go into a little bit more detail on what we can do with this. So if you look, this is the joystick and you can see it says single CC, pitch bin, dual CC. So you have different options. Now, if you look, CC goes left and right and then this one right here goes up and down. So it's kind of like XY, but on the uh, joystick. So left and right is one value, up and down is another value. And those values are noted right here. So you do need a little bit of knowledge on what MIDI information is to actually you know, know what you're doing with these values. So um, a single CC, what a CC is, is a control change. So CC stands for control change, and you can have control change values from zero to 127. So one standard MIDI cable can transmit 16 different channels on MIDI. Each of those MIDI cables can have 0 to 127 control change messages. Each of those control change messages have 0 to 127 values. There are several kind of other messages that MIDI channels can transmit, including program changes, 0 through 127, and notes. So these are the type of messages that we're actually gonna deal with inside the MPK mini editor. So what I wanna do before we move on, I wanna send this actual uh, template to my RAM. This is just the default one that opened up whenever I opened it up. So I wanna send that to the RAM. All right, so it's sent successfully. This way we can look at our MIDI monitor. Let's see if I close this, if I open it again, if it will clear it, and it does, so that's very good. So let's go ahead and look at this. So theoretically, it says right here, CC is at 80, and that's gonna be on the left and right axis. So let's go ahead and turn it to the left. And you can see right there, message control 80. So that is indeed correct. And then up and down is gonna be 81. So let's see if that comes up. And you can see right there, control 81. So there you go with your joystick. Now the MPK Mini doesn't have like the pitch bin wheel or the mod wheel. So you might wanna use your joystick as pitch bin. And if you select pitch bin, let's send that to RAM. It's been sent, so let's go left. All right, you can see pitch bin shows up now. All right, and now let's pick dual CC, send that to RAM. All right, so what that's gonna do is if you put the um, joystick to the left, it's gonna send the CC of 80. If you push it to the right, it's gonna send the CC of zero. Okay, so left, right. Okay, 80 and zero. So that's what your joystick does. All right, I'm just gonna put that back on single CC. That covers the joystick. Let's move on to pad banks. So we got pad bank A. Now, if you look at the actual physical controller here, we got pad controls. We got banks, CC, program change. Now, depending on what you have selected here, it's gonna alter how these pads actually function. 
All right, so if you look at the pad area, we can see pad bank A right here. Now pad one is here and you can see that it's sending the note 16. So depending on what you have selected in the pad controls area, it's gonna send different types of MIDI information with the pads. So I wanna turn program change off. So if it's everything's off here and this is just highlighted, basically what it's gonna do is it's just gonna send a note value. Now the note value is right here. So pad five is gonna send a note value of 20. And if you look over here, it does send the note value of 20. Now, if I select CC, which again stands for control change. Now let's hit pad five. You can see it sends control 20. Let's go ahead and pick program change and then hit pad five. You can see it sends program 20. Turn program change off. So this could be useful for different things. The most obvious thing that this is gonna be useful for is to play drums or play notes. And that's when pad controls just natural. But if you hit CC, what that can do is actually send uh, control change messages. So if you're using um, a digital audio workstation, let's say you're using MPC Beats or Ableton Live, you can set these pads to play or stop. Because if you notice on the MPK Mini, there's no transport controls. So you can actually turn your pads into transport controls using CC. Now how this could be useful is you can program pad five to be stop, pad six to be play, pad seven to be record. This is just an example, but let's say you did that, right? And you were recording inside of Ableton Live. You can hit your record, you can start playing, and then when you're done playing, you can hit stop. All right, so that's CC, um, and then you have program change. Now the program change is gonna do different things based on what you have. Like for example, like in the Digitone, program change actually changes the pattern. Where it gets its name is it actually changes the program inside of a synthesizer. If you're using a synthesizer, you can change that program with the pads. Now I was using program change inside of NPC Beats to actually change the tracks and it was working, so I was able to select track one through eight with the pads. Again, you could program these to be whatever you want. Now, if you look at the notes, this one's on 20, and then you can see there's an actual note value underneath that. It's that G sharp on the zero octave. Now I can change that, so if I wanted it to be like 32, I can make it 32, and that's gonna be D sharp on the first octave, so it's gonna be G sharp one. And what that's gonna do is just gonna play that note an octave higher. And again, you know, I can, uh, for example, make it 44. You can see it's G sharp two. And then you can go the other way as well into negative octaves. All right, so the note eight is G sharp minus one. And the same for your control change, you can go from zero or to 127. Now, if you try to do 128, it's not gonna give you any value. Put it back on 20. So you could program this for every single pad that you want to, and you can make it useful for your own needs. Now keep in mind your pad bank A and pad bank B can have completely separate MIDI notes. So keep that in mind. Now, another thing I do wanna mention about the pads before we move on is if you look down here, it says pad MIDI channel 10. So the MPK mini can transmit on two different MIDI channels. So for standard like MIDI, you have one through 16. You can see right here, one through 16. And what this is, is you have 16 channels that you can transmit all this da MIDI data on, like separate channels. So you can transmit a lot of different information. You can have your pads be on a separate channel than your knobs and your keys. And your keys are going to be on a, their own channel with the knobs. So pads, channel 10, key bed, ink, MIDI controls are going to be on MIDI channel one. So you can separate your MIDI channels. So theoretically, you can have your pads like control a key, like a drum beat, and then you could play the keys. Or you can have your pads going to like a bass, and then your keys going to like electric piano, for example, and then you can play the electric piano with your right hand and the bass line with your left hand, something like that. So if you look to the right, we got our knobs. You can actually rename your knobs right here. And the reason why that's important is because on the MPK Mini, you can actually see the name of the knob. So like if you wanna program a, a knob to control a cutoff filter on a synthesizer, you can name it cutoff, right? So like cut off. Okay, so let's send that to the RAM. So now whenever I turn K1, 
If you look right there, it says cutoff. So I know that's controlling the cutoff filter. Now that might seem trivial, but that might actually be useful to see what parameter that you're actually changing, right? And you can see I'm changing it on channel one. And then you have your control change values from zero to 127 right there. So uh, basically, if I turn the knob all the way to the left, it's gonna give me a value of zero. If I turn it all the way to the right, it's gonna give me a value of 127. Now these knobs are continuous, so it kind of sounds weird to turn it all the way to the right or all the way to the left. There's really no all the way to the right or left, but you can actually put this in relative mode as well. What it was in before was absolute mode where you can go from zero to 127. Now relative mode is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be based on your equipment because your equipment needs to actually be able to accept relative mode because these knobs are continuous. So what that's gonna enable you to do is pick up a value where you left off without jumping. So you could customize all the different knobs, whatever values that you want right here. Now what's really cool about this is your software might have 32 different values that you wanna control with the knobs. Well, you only have eight knobs, right? But you can program different values on different programs. Let's say I'm on program one, I can program this knob to be one and go all the way up to eight. If I go to program two, I could program this knob to be CC9 all the way up to 16. That gives me twice as many parameters. And then I can keep doing that all the way up to eight different pad banks. So you can get a lot of parameters that you can access, but you can only access eight at a time. If you're finding value in this video, remember to give it a thumbs up below. It's gonna help the channel. It's gonna help the video get seen by those who might need to see this information. I appreciate you for doing that. All right, so let's move on to the little keyboard section down here. Now you can see we have a transpose option. So um, on zero, this key here, this leftmost key is gonna be the key of C. So when I hit that, it's gonna be C, which is note 48. If I transpose it up one, watch what happens to that value. It makes it C sharp. So C sharp is really this key, this black key. But since I transpose it up, it moved that key down here. All right, and if I go to two, you can see that it turns to D, and D's really this key, but those notes are transposed two. All right, and if I do three, it just keeps going. So this is really D sharp up here, but if I play this key, this key's now D sharp, and you can put it the opposite way as well, up to 12 or down to minus 12. And that's in semitones. Now, if you look right here, we got the octave kind of um, option here. So this is gonna be default, what octave your keyboard's gonna be in. So you can make it a higher octave by default or a lower octave by default. So, so if you wanna get to an octave really quick, you can like have like program one be at minus four octaves and then program two be at plus four. So you can just go ahead and hit program select and then boom, you can be in a different octave. Underneath that we have arpeggiator. So these are kind of like some default settings that you could put in your arpeggiator. So you can have one program have your arpeggiator by default just turned on. Down here we got tap tempo. So there's a tap tempo button on here. So right now it's on two. So when I tap the tempo, after two taps it's gonna calculate what the tempo should be. But if I put it on three, if I tap it, after the third tap, it's gonna figure out the tempo. And then four, after the fourth tap, it's gonna figure out the tempo. Here is your default tempo of your arpeggiator, 120. You can change that to what you desire. If you want your tempo to be 70, you could do that right there, type it in. Here's where we set our default time division. So you can do quarter notes, quarter triplets, all the way to 30 second note triplets. Now keep in mind, you can change all this on your keyboard, but these are just the default settings that you can make it be. Now you can change your default octave here. You can have it where the default clock is the internal clock because there is a clock in here or you can have it read external. So if you're in like Ableton Live, you can read Ableton Live's clock by default. You can have the uh, arpeggiator type. Right here you have latch where if you press the notes down and then lift up, it's gonna latch whatever 
uh, notes that you played and then you got your swing. Now I do want to talk about aftertouch because this does have aftertouch and you'll look there's a couple different options you can have. You could turn your aftertouch off, you could turn your aftertouch to channel and then you could turn it to polyphonic. Now if you put it to channel it's going to sense the pressure of all the pads held down and generate the highest channel aftertouch value among them. If you put it on poly or polyphonic it's going to allow each pad to being held down to have its own separate independent polyphonic aftertouch value. And if you turn it off, it's going to turn it off. Now, if you look over here, we got our tools. Let's go back to auto populate. So we can do auto populate. You can see our pads, our pad banks right here. So we could apply different effects to our pad bank. So we can set our scale here. We could do chromatic up, which means, you know, it's just going to have all the notes chromatically, chromatic down. You can do uh, different scales. You have all these scales to choose from, major, minor, harmonic, minor. But if we do chromatic up, we can start from zero. Let's apply it to bank, see what happens. And you can see, starting on pad one, our note value is zero and it goes up to seven. And we could do the same thing with the knobs where we basically, instead of like program these one by one, say if we wanted to start at eight, we could apply that. And you can see it starts at eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And then we can set our low value and our high value. So if we wanted our low value to be zero and a high value to be, I don't know, 50 for whatever reason, we could do that. And you can see our low value and our high value transmit as well right there. Last thing I want to talk about are how we actually send our programs. So right here is how we actually send our program to our keyboard. Keep in mind, you do need to have your keyboard plugged in for this to work. So if I'm happy with the settings that I created in here, I can send this by pressing the send button. Now, if I want to receive a program, I can actually receive it here. You can actually rearrange your programs this way. Like, I don't know, if you wanted program one to be on program seven, you would just receive it from one, load it in here, and then send it to seven. So you could rearrange that way. All right, so let's just try to send a program. So program name, let's just call it PGM one. I want to send this to program five. All right. Successfully sent it. I don't know why I picked five. The numbers are off, but let's go with program two. I want to send this to six successfully sent. Now let's look at our device here. So if I go to program select five, you can see it says program one. And if I go to six, you can see it says program two. And you know, I have all my other ones that were in there as well. Like that's just the one I just programmed randomly. You see, I have my MPC programs, but if I want to get back to the one we just sent, program one, program two. I know this was a long video. I hope it has helped you out. Remember to give it a thumbs up below and, you know, thanks for watching and remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more videos about the MPK Mini and leave any video ideas in the comments below or any questions as well. My name is Matthew. Continue creating music. We'll talk soon. Thanks for watching. Peace out.